Hey, it's John and Mike, weird-dudes.com. And uh, today we are, we're talking loggers. And this is kind of coming out of my assignment for the latest Jar of Destiny beer. Um, but uh, with a couple of twists, and we'll talk about what those twists are. But uh, when you're getting ready for the summer season and uh, people start bringing beers to your house, suddenly you're, you have all these Modellos and uh, Dos yeah. Eques in your fridge. And you're like, where did these come from? And so like uh, we had a couple things kind of lined up. First of all, I did buy some ingredients for another lager, albeit a German lager. Um, but also, a, uh, a viewer sent us packages of this new modern hybrid lager use, Nova Lager, from Lalaman. If you want to show the other camera that. So I was inspired by a few things, beer in my fridge and uh, a new modern hybrid lager strain. So this is my Vienna Lager by Mexico. I'm, I'm calling this the a Mexican Lager, but probably not accurate. Um, but uh, you'll see why in a moment. So for water, use spring water with uh, seven grams of gypsum I added to the boil. For grains, this is how the grain bill goes. 67% of Weirman Vienna Malt, 22% uh, of Brees Pilsner Malt, and 11% of Flake Rice. Flaked rice. Yes, because I think that like all the, the the experiments we did that yes. you put together, I think we I liked the flaked rice the most. I agree. And I said I we're going to use that as the adjunct. Um, I'll, th there's another malt. There's another malt in this, but it did not. It was not a part of my mash. <laughs> good, good on you. Okay. Good on you. All right. We'll go. We'll we'll talk about why that is. In a moment. All right. Next set of ingredients for hops. 23 grams of perilla hops uh, for 60 minutes. 23 grams being weird. That's because I used the other portion for the German pills. Uh, 51 point, oh, sorry, 5.1% alpha acids. At 20 minutes, I had two different kinds of hops, and that's basically because I had them left over. I had 12 grams of Saz hops. That was at 4.5% alpha and 28 grams of Holotower at 4.0% uh, alpha. Uh, and then uh, we did a Whirlpool. Did a, an ounce or 28 grams of Holotow again. Hoppy. At, uh, at like that did, I cooled it down to 185 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, Whirlpooled that for 10 minutes and then chilled all the way down. For yeast, it's just this one packet of uh, Nova Lager yeast. And we fermented this at 62 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 17 degrees Celsius, for one week. Beautiful. It was done in a water bath in my basement because we were doing fluctuating yep, temperatures. It was getting getting fast. a little bit hotter, but I wanted to keep it, you know, and it was just the water coming out of the ground was still pretty cold. And I was able to maintain temperatures by taking out, like, mm -hmm. you know, ice packs, yep. you know, twice a day. And it was fine. I just kept checking the temperature. It was like... 62 degrees, once one week was over, trans transfer that into uh, the fridge and chilled that for a week um, at uh, 33 degrees Fahrenheit, one degree Celsius. Just trying to like get all the yeast, and I'll tell you this fluctuated hard and like dropped out pretty nicely. I mean, yeah. um, and then just for insurance purposes, I did uh, fine it with some gelatin. Okay. The uh, original ge gravity on this was 1042. Finished at uh, 10.09, ABV being 4.3%. And the fun story, beyond like the experimenting with this lager strain, uh, so I was boiling, it was very yellow. And I said to myself, I need a little color. So I took two ounces of Dehust Vireman Carafa Special 2. Yep. In the plastic bag, I just bashed the heck out of it <laughs> until it was all crushed, put that into a... Uh, you know, a, a fine mesh bag. And as it was like right in the beginning of the boil, just stuck it in there for- Good for you. And just, you know, steeped until I I felt like the color looked- That's the way to do it. This, like this. this. It was, you know, a little bit darker. This is nice. So people, when people look at me like, oh, it's not like a fizzy yellow lager. It's got no, flavor. it's better than that. Something, yeah. right? 
which then gets backed up by all the Vienna malt, which I like when I was tasting this before I came over, I was like, I hope people like Vienna malt. <laughs> Cause that yeah, is but it. it's softened a little bit with the Pilsner malt. I mean, it definitely 100% has that, um, mm. how, how, how do you describe Vienna malt to people? Like the aroma of it, at least to me, it's, it's toasty, but it's really more like, wheat bread like yeah. a mild wheat yeah. bread yep. and toast at the same time like uh, opening up a fresh loaf of wheat bread and smelling it that's really what it sort of smells like it's almost like wet toast is what it smells like right i mean it, it's just the impression it puts on you in a very pleasant way or like warm bread you know mm. it's really nice um i love the cleanliness of the overall like you get the only thing i get out of here flavor wise from a malt standpoint, is that very soft, gentle, loving Vienna malt. And that rice is just making the rest of it just super clean and yeah, relaxed. Yeah, sure is. Super clean and relaxed. Yeah. Uh, drink this by, screw a liter. I, you drink that two liters at a time, this one. This is amazing. Um, the hop profile on this is like just enough that's balancing it. Mm. If anything, I could stand to have just a little bit more aggressiveness in that 60-minute edition. Yeah. Just a little bit more. But it might then, maybe I drink it by the liter instead of two <laughs> liters at that point. <laughs> but um, I would certainly ask for a second liter after that. It's um, So from that standpoint, it's fine. Um, even that Whirlpool edition, it's not really, I, get a, yeah. I get not a lot of that, like, flowery, spicy, yeah. flowery, yep. herbal thing. I don't know, maybe that's interactive. Maybe the yeast has pulled some of that out. Who knows? But I'm not, I'm not missing it. Um, yep. It's just that, you know, based on your recipe. But then again, someone drinking this wouldn't be looking for that. I'm looking for it based on what you, you told me the recipe was. Um, and your trick with the carafa special is spot on <laughs> because the color of this is, is just phenomenally awesome. And for as long as it's been lagering in the gelatin trick, it is, it is, like a fraction of a percentage away from being absolutely brilliant. It's yeah. very, very, very clear. It's awesome. It, this is 100% when the sun gets high and you're feeling the heat, this is the one. This is it. Wait till we taste the German something? pills, but yes, I agree. Okay. I totally I'll hear wait. you. Yeah, but like that's what I was, I was going for. Yeah. Something with, you know, you inspired me with the low ABV beer, yeah. which uh, kind of led in. So this is like three weeks out. So. One week fermentation, one yeah. week chilled in the primary fermentation in the fridge. Yep. Then I kegged it, yep. and it's been in. So mm. it is pretty awesome. I'm glad that this result is coming from this yeast strain. And yes. The, and the speed you're reporting, because there's a beer on the floor over here that <laughs> has this yeast in it as well, and you'll get that in a few weeks. Um, so Excellent. stay tuned for that. Nice. But I also noted, huh. This seems to be done rather quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's nice to see uh, some recapitulation there. Mm. Uh, tremendous. This is a, this is a fantastic beer. I would set yourself to getting another keg of this made because we'll probably fly through this. Yeah, probably. I I just need to figure out. The hops are kind of like haphazards, like what I had left mm. over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I can figure it out. Yeah, you're missing that five extra grams of perlay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah, it was like somehow I had 23 grams I left I from the German. Like, and I'm like, I I must have like measured in ounces for uh, the German pills, and yeah. then I mean, that's it, what was if you didn't change grams. a thing, it would still be absolutely, absolutely yeah. excellent. Yeah. Um, as it warms up a little bit, I'm getting a little bit more of that melange of noble hop character um so that's great cool um, well uh, thumbs up on the nova lager i know yeah. that uh i've just started to see this more mm -hmm. often mm -hmm. in uh online stores and i haven't seen it in store anywhere but most of my shopping is online anyway yep. um so anyway uh so if you're looking to try a well, you know, if you want to try brewing a lager and you can get uh, a nice temp, uh, just like just below room temperature, uh, I think this could be a great option for yeah. you, yeah. for sure. When it comes to like getting this clarity, if you don't have a fridge to stick your, uh, you know, your keg into or, yep. you know, whatever, that's that may be an, an issue. But 
the speed at which this uh, fermented, and I, I knew that I was just gonna, you know, do it for a week, just, you know, cause I have a YouTube channel, I gotta get things out on camera. Pressure. But at the same time, like, th like a three week process of fermentation, some conditioning and then keg, like basically can, uh, packaging, yep. which I threw in the keg, I hit it with gelatin, set the, uh, the CO2 onto it, and this is what came out. Pretty happy with it. Pretty awesome. happy with the speed. Okay, so hopefully you learned something. We, the recipe is in the description. Um, so live and learn. Hopefully that if you're looking to brew lagers, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere during the summer, not so much. I usually do my lagers in the winter so that I can enjoy them in the summer, but uh, this is a good option for There's those. a better solution than that Norwegian strain. It's lager. Because <laughs> this tastes more lager-like. True that. Yeah, yeah. And I think that I heard a, a I, I, Jamil uh, reemerged and he was yep. talking about someone would say like, oh, this is lager-like. He's like, no. He, he, he yeah. kind of knocked on yep. that. Yep. So uh, I was sort of happy with that uh, chat. In any case, hope you liked this video. Give us a thumbs up if you have. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already because we love doing this and uh, we'd like you to be connected to us. For John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com, brew on. Cheers.